Okay, welcome. Uh, today we're going to start with the Rational Zeros Theorem. The Rational Zeros Theorem is a theorem that is going to help us um, find roots or zeros or possible zeros that we can try because, see, the thing that we're going to get into is we're going to get situations where we're going to have a polynomial that has, let's say, a degree 5 or a degree 6. And so that we don't have any tools in our tool belt or toolbox to uh, handle these types of things, right? You know, we have tools for handling uh, quadratic functions, quadratic equations, uh, factoring, and things like that. Uh, if it's a cubic, then we can do tri-factor by grouping. Um, some, like, you know, that's pretty much the only method that we have. But when we get to quartics and we get to higher degree polynomials, we don't have a lot of tools. Well, that's where the rational zeros theorem comes in. Now, it doesn't tell us directly how to, to get the, uh, the roots or what is going to be a root, but we're going to use it to help us find the possible rational roots. Now, on the other now the thing also you have to realize is this theorem um, gives us possible rational roots. It doesn't mean that any of them will be a rational root. It just means, hey, if you want something to start with, here's a list. And so here, the rational zeros theorem is going to help us figure out, hey, here's a set of possible rational roots that we can try. Start with those. Now again, there's no guarantee that this list of rational roots, or possible rational roots rather, uh, will work, okay? Um, but we won't know unless we try them all. Now in the cases of this textbook and things you're going to get in a college algebra classroom, you're going to be able to find at least one or two that are going to work to help you get it down to where you can have a something, uh, a degree of a polynomial that you can work with, right? So that's the whole purpose of this that we're going to use, is we're going to use this rational zeros theorem to find possible rational zeros so that what we can do is we can test those and then those that work, we can use the synthetic division to find um, what the factor is and find our quotient and then start whittling it down using those possible rational roots until we get a polynomial, a quotient, right, that is either a quadratic or something that we can use something else with, okay? So this is, this theorem that I'm going to go over right now is basically what we're going to use to get us going, okay? So here's what it says. It says, the rational zero sum says that if we have p divided by q, if p over q is a rational number, with in lowest terms, so that's another thing. So this is in lowest terms, right? We want to make sure p divided by q is in lowest terms. And if p over q is a zero of the function f. And f is a polynomial function with integer coefficients. Okay? So if all of this is true, then P, we, then we know by this theorem that P has to be a factor of the constant term. Okay. And Q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Okay. So in other words, this is A sub 0. So P is a factor of A sub 0 and q is a factor of a sub n, the leading coefficient. Okay, so again, let me just rephrase, let me rephrase that. So if, if you have a rational number in lowest terms, p over q, and that rational number, p over q, is a zero of a polynomial function, where the polynomial function has integer coefficients, then the theorem says that p must be a factor of the constant term, and q must be a factor of the leading coefficient. And so that is what we're going to use, because what we can do is now is say, hey, that means that I can take all possible factors of the, co the constant term, take all possible factors of the leading coefficient, and I can take all the different values of p, divide them by all the different values of q, and that should give me a list of values that could be a zero. 
And so that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so that's it. So next we'll start using this and we'll do a few examples. Have a good day.